Hello, I'm Ilian St. Hilaire, and in this technical video, we're going to take a look at the in-depth technologies behind session recording, session desktop indexing, and the desktop multiplexer. So when we come to take a look at Mesh Central, one of the biggest features is remote desktop. And of course, once you understand how the remote desktop protocol works, um, then it becomes more interesting and to look at other aspects of remote desktop, that is uh, recording, of course. So I'm gonna start by taking a look at session recording. I have it set up on my server here. And if uh, just as a refresher, you can click on a device Actually, what you do is you click on a device group. You can enable the record sessions here. And then what I'm going to do is um, duplicate this tab. So I have a second tab for my server. I'm going to go into my users recording here. And this is the recordings I have uh, on my server now. And what I'm going to do is go back here, select a device, for example, tiny number three, desktop, connect. And so now I'm connected to this remote desktop session. I can open like a file browser, file, uh, file explorer, move it around. And uh, while I'm doing that, you'll notice that on the upper right, there's a little red dot here. That means that the session is being recorded on the server. And then once I'm done with the session, I hit disconnect and you'll see that the session was just added in the session recordings. So how does that work? And how do we make this happen? Well, obviously we don't want to record on the browser side and then have the browser re-upload the data to the server. What we want to do is have the server record it as it's transferring over to the browser. So let's take a look at that. Um, here I just have a couple of slides. First one, uh, session recording, obviously there's a little right, red dot uh, indicating that the session is being recorded. You need to go in the configuration, uh, the config.json file of Mesh Central and set that up the path, uh, how many files you want to keep and so on. Once it's set up, we can record a remote desktop, you can report, court, uh, in, record Intel AMT KVM, so hardware KVM if you have that, and you can report more, record also terminal session and serial overland session on Intel AMT. So uh, you can record quite a bit of stuff. And so the way it works is that once you set it up, then you have your device that's uh, sending data to, to the browser and the browser sending data back. And as that's being done, <clears throat> the uh, Mesh Central server will save whatever traffic is being sent in both direction, in either direction, with timestamps over to a file. So here we have like a MC rec file, that's a Mesh Central re recording file. And what we'll do is the, the server doesn't do any processing on the data whatsoever. All it does is it puts a small header saying at what time and in which direction the, the data was recorded, and then followed by the data size and, and obviously the data here. And this repeats over and over frame by frame. So uh, if you want to have a player play back this data, all you have to do is open the file. And for example, if you want to take a look at data only coming from the uh, agent to the browser, well, you go through this file and you look for uh, data frames that are in the agent to browser direction. And then you take that data and you play it back to the, the uh, remote desktop play, uh, viewer uh, at the right times, and that will play back the file. So that's exactly what the viewer does. And in fact, uh, if you haven't seen the viewer, I can go back to my, to my um, uh, sample uh, server here, and you have the remote desktop uh, sessions here. I can hit play on one of them, and this is a 10 second uh, It's a 20 second recording index every 10 seconds with this, the video, and so on. And if I hit space, you'll see that this is the recording I have earlier, and you can see the progress bar at the bottom here as it's moving through frames. And you can also uh, play at different speeds, you can pause and so on. So this player is actually this, almost the same thing as the viewer here, 
uh, the, the, the viewer that you do remote desktop in, the, obviously there's no input. And what happens is that instead of getting data from the remote agent, it gets, a, a, it gets data from a file at a, a given rate depending on the timestamp. So obviously you could play the entire file as fast as you wanted, but that's not that useful. What you want to do is replay it um, at a certain pace that matches the timestamp of the data. And so you would, be, um, you would have your file replayed correctly. So let's go back to my uh, slideshow. And so basically this is the basics of how the, uh, the recordings are done. <clears throat> now, let's suppose you want to be able to skip to any point in the file. So um, what I can do is go back here to my uh, server. I'll take a file that's like this file is longer, or for example, this one is, uh, oh, we'll just play this one, 21 seconds. Well, it's indexed every 10 seconds. That means that I can skip through the file. I can skip directly to a certain position in the file, like 10 seconds ahead or, or, or so on. So if I pause here and restart, because this is indexed every 10 seconds, then um, there's basically an iframe if you if you know MPEG. But basically, there's there's a way for the player to skip to any um, to any position in the file at every 10 second interval. Now, I want to explain a little bit how that's done. And so first. Um, just realize that the way remote desktop work is you usually have a full first frame and then you have partial frames being sent at different areas of the screen as time goes on. And so that's basically how it goes. And also the frames are not sent at regular intervals. So if there's nothing changing on the screen on the remote side, then no frames or no data is sent. And if there's you know, a lot of things changing, then the frames are sent as fast as the network will allow. Okay, so in order to do indexing of a recording, <clears throat> what we want to do is at regular intervals, we want to be able to redraw the entire screen um, at that position, uh, at that time. <clears throat> so for example, if you're 15 minutes into a recording and you, you click uh, to skip to that position, I want to be able to recreate that the frame at the 50 minute mark. And so what we're going to do is we are going to uh, run through a process called indexing and we are going to at regular interval mark what frames we would need to paint to minimally get back to this position. So for example, if I want to get back to frame number five here, well, I need to draw the first full frame plus this these three frames are kind of identical. They're all the, the top right of the frame, and then this middle one. So what I, I'll need to do is draw the first one, the fourth one, because the fourth one fully covers the you know number two and number three. So I need number one, number f for you know most of the screen, number four for this area, and number five for this area. So if I draw one, four, and five, then I'm back to this spot. So it, obviously, if, if I want to just f go to the first frame, then the first frame is complete. So I just draw one. If I want to go to this position, I draw you know, the first frame plus the third frame here. And then if I want to <clears throat> go to the end of the, uh, of the file, then I will have to draw frame one, and then frame five, and then frame nine in this example. And so uh, what indexing does is it just marks at regular interval what, um, fr what bitmaps or what places in the file you would need to draw in order to get back to the correct frame, uh, the frame you want to, to be at. And so these, uh, uh, for example, uh, you know, if I look at frame number seven here, I have to paint one, five, and seven, and all I need to do is have pointers back into the recording file to sort of pointer to, to frame one, um, to, um, to picture number one, a pointer to picture number five, and a pointer to point picture number seven. So that's all I need. So these indexes are very small, but they are at regular intervals, say at every 10 seconds interval. 
And so they're very small and they require some understanding of how the protocol works. But once you index the file, then uh, you can skip through the file any, anywhere you want and it's very, very efficient. So that's what the player does. And so if the file is indexed and uh, what we'll have is we'll have a, a, the, re the recording uh, file will have a bunch of images at, you know, uh, at regular intervals. And then there will be an index that points back to these images. And so the player will reconstruct the, the frame. And that's what you get there. In fact, uh, you don't see it, but in the player here, if I skip to a certain part, actually you can kind of see it very quickly. Um, what it does here is it very rapidly repaints all the frames needed to, re to, to draw this, um, to get back to the situation here. So um, actually I'm right there. Let's see, yeah. So anyway, uh, so what I do is I blank out the frame usually draw all the pictures and then um, and then uh, you know show it and so what you only what you see is the fully painted frame okay so this is how indexing works for um, for recording files now I want to go to a concept that's even more complicated and that is the desktop multiplexer so by default mesh central uh, well, well, of course, Mesh Central will allow multiple viewers to see the same desktop at any given time. But by default, what happens is that the built-in agent there um, will create one stream through Mesh Central for each of the viewers. So if you have three people viewing the, uh, the screen, then you will have a single stream, a, a single capturing uh, process, but that capture process will grab the picture and send it three times to the three different uh, streams to the three different browsers. And so if a browser is really slow, like they're on a dial-up modem or something, then the two other browsers will also be slow. And that's because the, the, the computer here will, will wait till the, the picture is sent to all three streams before uh, capturing the next screen and, um, and sending the next picture. So that's not great. And of course, it uses a lot of bandwidth on the, um, on the agent side. Um, and then you, you have this problem where the slowest browser uh, slows down everybody else. So if you enable the uh, desktop multiplexer, what happens is that then the agent has a single stream of pictures it sends to the server. And then the server will split that stream along the multiple viewers. So that's much more, more efficient. And so what you do is, in order to, to enable that, you go in settings uh, of the config.json and you say desktop multiplex to true. And, you'll, and th then you restart the server. It will enable this mode. And so how does it work? Well, <clears throat> we've looked earlier how indexing works, right? And so we, we know uh, at any given time when we index what what file or uh, what pictures we need to fully cover the screen. So what the multiplexer does is it does this in real time and it only keeps the picture it needs, the minimal set of pictures it needs to fully cover the screen. So what will happen is something like this. The, um, the agent will send data, uh, you know, basically on the right here, it will feed a stack of pictures. So it starts with the first picture, first full frame there. And then it, it, it kind of keeps sending more pictures and kind of makes this stack go bigger and bigger towards the right. And then at any point in time, the, the server will discard pictures that it, uh, if a new picture um, fully covers the old ones. So for example, you know, picture number three here fully covers number two, so it, it will get rid of number two. And then, um, then pick this picture here fully covers this one, so it will get rid of picture number three. This one isn't fully covered by, um, it doesn't cover any of the previous ones, so it will be kept. So anyway, at any given time, the server keeps a list of all the JPEGs or a, a full, a list of all the JPEGs and obviously the entire image data um, that it needs to fully cover the screen. And so as obviously more pictures are 
um, received by the agent, then previous images are dropped uh, as, as those pictures cover existing images that uh, were received in the list before. So typically, the, the server will keep, for a regular desktop, around you know, 10 to up to 50 different pictures in this, uh, uh, in this list of uh, image you need to cover the screen. And then what happens is that these viewers, what they do is they connect and they have a point in the list that they're at. So this viewer here just connected. And so it's, it's receiving the first full frame. <clears throat> this uh, viewer here connected a while back and it probably got this frame plus one, two or three of these frames. And then this one, and then th this, this one uh, is very fast and he's been there for a while. So he's uh, gotten all of the frames and he's getting more as the agent um, is sending more. So what you're doing is that these viewers are all racing towards the right. So they're all racing towards getting the best frame possible, like the, the real-time frame. And so slower viewers will basically drag along in this queue and you know, and and at any given point of in time, they're being sent an image. And then once they're done, they're gonna be sent the next image in the queue and the next one and the next one. And of course, uh, the queue is very dynamic because some images are dropped, you know, um, as new images come in that cover them, and um, and the viewers basically re are chasing the front of the queue as the queue is is becoming bigger on uh, in the front. So I hope that kind of makes sense, uh, but uh, essentially this is the way that we can basically do adaptive um, uh, speed uh, handling of multiple agents, uh, multiple viewers that have different speeds. Is that somebody slower will tend to drag in the back of the queue or somebody very fast will be uh, you know, closer to the front of the queue here and receive all the pictures where the, the, somebody in the back will skip frames as you know the, they're trying to move through the queue. So that's roughly how it works and so um, fairly complicated uh, in, uh, in the code, but once you enable it, you can have literally hundreds of people watching the session. And uh, uh, there's no slowdown for everybody. It's very, very efficient. And it's also very efficient for the server. Uh, the, the server doesn't need to actually decode any of the JPEG files. What it, all it needs to do is decode what the width and the height and the position at which the, the, file, the image is going to be placed on the screen. So as long as it knows the area that that image covers, that's all it needs to know. And then it can keep this tracking list, but it never actually decodes anything. So it's very efficient. Um, the, the penalty for the desktop multiplexer is that you need more RAM because you'll need to keep those 50, you know, 20 to 50 different um, JPEG images in RAM as the, um, as the multiplexer handles the session. And even if you have a single viewer watching a remote desktop session, as if you have remote, uh, the multiplexer turned on, you will be paying the cost of this additional memory to keep these JPEGs. But the nice thing is if you have one person, you know, doing a, a remote desktop session, somebody else joins, the, it doesn't affect this traffic at all. The, the, the new person joins, starts at the end of the queue, starts getting the pictures and, and runs towards the front of the queue and then catches up to the session. So that's how it works. And the last thing I want to cover is there is data accounting in Mesh Central. So the idea is that uh, we should be able to um, quantify and account for how much traffic each of the users are generating on the server. And so if you have um, a desktop uh, multiplexer turned on, then there is some accounting here that's being done so that uh, upload and download data for each of the users is, you know, counts against their traffic count fully. But if you have two users, then the um, agent to server data flow is divvied up between the number of users uh, connected at that 
given time uh, at, that, at that time. So as users join and leave, this, this, the traffic between the agent and the server gets divvied up um, amongst uh, those users uh, right here. So that's the traffic accounting stuff. Anyway, um, I hope that was useful. This is uh, basically a technical presentation here. I wanted to cover how the, uh, the session recording is done, how the indexing is done, how the multiplexer is done at high, high level. Hopefully, you'll appreciate the details of how Mesh Central works. Thank you very much.